separate that and bring these competitors, you know, out to these tournaments. If you have 100 students, there's no reason minimum you could have minimum 10 competitors to go to a tournament. You and know? that's being conservative so, because if you take the 80-20 rule and you break that in half, that's 10 out of 100, which is fine. So if you have a 500 school, you might, student school, you might be able to bring 50 people. And some of these, and just like what you said, some of these top fighters of yesteryear um, have had a hard time to bring students to compete. And, and I, I, honestly, we spoke about it. I don't blame them because, because the respect part of it alone you know, the, the, the students, um, they learn the student creed. And then when they go to tournaments, sometimes it could be a little um, opposite from what they used to. And, and again, no knock into what has happened. I get it. You know, God bless them. Best wishes. I think there's enough space for all of us. We're going after a group of people who have been in dormant state for a long time. But at the same time, I believe that they really do have quality. You know, like my, my student, Mighty Joe, cannot teach anything but what the hell he knows. And you and I both know that's one of the baddest freaking fighters probably ever in any form of rules. <laughs> oh, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, and it, it's, it hurts me to not see even a lot of my own fellow teammates um, being on Paul Mitchell, not having a, a Pedro Xavier school out there and not having a, an Alberto Montron school out there, not seeing Joe Pina around anymore. You know, he took a different avenue with the Taekwondo, which is fantastic with the Olympics and everything like that. But um, these are people that even even instructors like Tokyo Joe, you know, um, hey, Stingo, you know, my, Stingo, Stingo Garcia, um, you know. Now, let's stop um, for a second. Let's stop for a second. How many um, students approximately and be conservative you think they'd have collectively? Oh, cool. Shoot, we're talking probably uh, at least probably 2,500 to 3,000. So so imagine using the 10% ratio there, how many competitors these people were able to bring. You know, I mean, but now when you combine the business structure, it makes a little more business sense, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, and that, that's, that's what's going to separate us, I believe, from, from the others is educating on – having successful schools and having competitors also, you know, and, and not having that stereotype of, oh, competition room students. You know, I mean, you had one of the biggest schools ever, over 300 competitors, okay, and you had a ton of competitors. You had your own team, totally awesome. You know, I used to go to a tournament and fight two or, two or three of your guys in a tournament, you know. Um, it, it's, you know... Joe Pina had a slew of people, every one of them good out there, competition. You know, his school was big. I mean, I'm still going. I had a ton of competitors throughout the years, you know. Um, so we're going to do our homework and figure out how to, how to draw this in and how to, you know, convince these people that, hey, this, keep us, this kept us around. This kept us going. I mean, competition really – kept my, myself going and, and kept me involved in the sport and it helped me still keep my students up to date on what's going on today. You know, you know what's it's, interesting? We spoke about it briefly today, but you and I are definitely two people who pretty much have kept ourselves involved. Now, I did it in the capacity of rec suit probably vicariously, then I popped up and competed. You did it more as a coach in recent years, but when it comes down to it, most of our peers have disappeared, man. We, we, we're some of the few left in leadership position. Isn't that true? Oh, absolutely. Yes, it's true. I mean, and we have to figure out why, you know, that, that's, that's my, my big thing is, you know, why? And is it just that, why did we stick around? I mean, believe me, going into coaching, was I'd much rather have been fighting, you know, <laughs> coaching okay, is, let, is, let, is hard. Let's say here, you just said that, and that's really, really ironic because today I was saying, I don't want to do this. This must be done. I'd rather be competing in this. But no one took yes. survey at the level I think it was possible because we were already in the garden. We are already on ESPN TV. We are already in the Wembley Stadium and so on and so forth. I mean, let's, let's keep it real. You and I, as competitors, had an opportunity to literally get away from the so-called ghettos of the Bronx and, and, and Connecticut and what have you and travel the world. Let's talk about that for a second. How many places have you been to? 
from a competitive standpoint. Well, listen, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, people look at Connecticut as, oh, this is, Connecticut's a nice place, this and that. I didn't come from the nice place to come in. I came from Fairhaven in Connecticut, New Haven, the Hill section, which were very, you know, poor, poor sport. Uh, it's part of the hood of today. Right now we just call the ghetto. It, it, <laughs> it's, called, it's called the hood. It was called the hood back then too. You know, and, they, and uh, if it wasn't for being picked up by Spider Brand 